many near misses. Four-time National Enduro champ Mike Lafferty finally broke through to win his first career GNCC race. But the series points leader Jason Raines remains the guy everyone is chasing. GNCC Racing from Loretta Lynn Student Ranch, next. Take I-40 West to exit 143, follow Route 13 North, and you're in Hurricane Mills, Tennessee, home of Round 5, the GNCC Racing presented by Suzuki, where the weather today is just flat hot. Heat's been good to me. I've uh, I've learned how to prepare myself for it. You know, this is probably our first heat race this year, and that's usually a little bit rough, but you know, it's going to be rough for everybody. And I've been training and working hard, and uh, you know, I got a few little bruises from two weeks ago, but they're pretty much healed up, and I'm looking forward to riding today. Getting back into this points race, Rodney Smith 26 behind the leader Jason Raines. Mike Lafferty's big win pulls him to within three. The guy who's never won a championship and will contend with the heat just like everybody else today. I have a lot of confidence in my training and stuff, and I've been working really hard. We've been training in the heat. It's been really hot. We're down at Randy's in South Carolina. Me and Randy have been working really hard, along with Barry Hawk, my uh, Ampro Yamaha teammate. We've all been working really hard, so I think uh, I think you might see uh, three Yamaha guys do well today. Dave Reef along with Scott Summers, a five-time champ, taking a look at the starting grid. All of these guys are going to deal with extreme temperatures today, Scott. Yeah, you know, the red is, gets really brutal. You know, and I say that for two reasons. One, the humidity is incredible. And two, the course gets really whooped out almost like Florida, but the dirt's harder. And they have these rocks that are like the shape of bricks in these deep creek beds. It's time to get busy. Kick start, we're down the way. Oh, and already one rider off, rolling just a little bit. Comes off a yellow bike, not sure who that is. Range, though, with a great start on the five. You know, when it's dry, it's very important to get a good start. So uh, Jason's right where he wants to be, making the dust instead of eating it. A couple more bikes go down to 23, that belonging to Todd Moraine. And number six is Barry Hawk. Tough break for him. He'll have to come from the back of the back. Good start for Rodney Smith, the defending series champ, to find him in third if we take a look at this race course. There's lots of uphills and downhills, and the ruts get pretty deep, you know. The, the terrain kind of, uh, or all the riders take its toll on the terrain. So uh, being able to ride the ruts is critical. The course takes you down through the rocky creek beds, up and down some hills, and then, of course, you have to contend with the dust. And those sharp rocks, which, of course, could cause problems with the tire, I'd imagine, pretty easily. Yeah, flats are very common at this event. There's a top three racing their way through. Lafferty, the most recent winner, trying to duplicate his efforts here as you take a look at Steve Hatch currently in fifth. You know, Steve Hatch is one person you do not want to get behind because he accelerates so hard. And at Loretta Lenz, his rocks really hurt. You can hear him working the throttle right there, and you can see throwing up a little bit of a roost. I imagine that probably doesn't feel too good against your face shield. <laughs> Absolutely not. Jimmy Jarrett kicking up a little bit of dust. Followed by Chuck Woodford and then Robbie Jinks. Battle for seven. Fred Andrews back of the pack again. And then Josh McLevy, the sole Honda rider. Smith working his way down a hill. Of course, a little bit wider than what we saw just a week ago. Yeah, this place has got quite a few more places to pass than uh, Cross Keys over at Big Buck. But the dust is not helping with the passing situation. And already you see Kudrowski with a pretty sizable gap back to that third place position. You know, both the mics, Lafferty and Kudrowski, suffered from, I guess, what you would say heat exhaustion at the end of this race last year. So it'll be interesting to see if they've done their homework and if they can withstand uh, what Loretta Lenz has to offer this year. You saw Jason Raines grab a little bottle of water, squirt a little bit on his body. He's five seconds behind Lafferty, trying to double up. Will he become the first repeat winner of 2002? We'll find out by races in. Round five of the Grand National Cross Country Series is being presented today by Suzuki, maker of innovative motorcycles and all-terrain vehicles. And by MSR Off-Road Riding Apparel, innovative off-road riding apparel for riders with a single track mind since 1971. Back at Loretta Lynn's Dude Ranch for round number five, and here's Mike Lafferty beginning to open it up much like he did one week ago. 
And then Jason Reigns is following pretty close. And that's a significant right now because Reigns in second finishes that way. He'll give up five points and he'll have a new point leader. That's right. Jenks in sixth place, fighting his way through the dust. And Mike Kodrowski seems to be doing a pretty good job of uh, getting through. This This really is a gnarly track. Lafferty, Reigns, Kodrowski, Smith, and Jenks at top five at this moment. That could change at any point in time. You know, drink systems are very important at this race. You know, you have to try to find a place to reach down and grab that hose and suck a little bit of water in your mouth because if you don't, you physically will just bump about two hours in. So how have things changed now for Mike Lafferty having won his first race? Well, Mike's probably a lot more relaxed. He's probably not going to use as much energy because he knows what he's capable of doing. He just did it. Top three starting to work their way away from the rest of this field, including Rodney Smith. Kind of mired back there all by himself. Tough to ride solo? Yeah, it is, but not for a guy like Rodney. You know, Rodney's been racing this series for about uh, five years, and he's 15 years older than Jason Reigns. So uh, how's that for being able to draw from a bank of knowledge? You know, the guy's just been at it for a long time. This is one of the roughest sections on the course. It's really got deep looks. It's hard to see through the lens of the camera, but uh, there were several big get-offs in those real rocky looks right there. It's like a pretty high-speed portion of the course as well. On board with Mark Hyde. Oh, wow, big wipeout. That's Robbie Jenks was in fifth before that crash. What do you think happened in that portion? I'm not sure if there was a tree root or a rock. It's, it's hard to tell. But he went he went down with quite a bit of speed, and that's something that you don't often see. He's definitely limping a little bit. Normally, if one of the top guys falls down, it's kind of a low-speed, laugh-in type fall over. But that one, he went down with some authority. Wide world of sports type open right there. He went for a big tumble. Mike Lafferty can fly to complete lap number two. You can see Reigns maybe starting to nip at some of that time. Kudrowski right behind him. Yeah, Mike reached up and grabbed his uh, roll-off system to get some clear vision for the next go-around. When the races are hot like this, is there a point in time during the contest where you reserve a little bit of energy, try to save some? Well, you can't win the race in the first hour. You can't even win the race in the second hour. You know, all you can do is lose the race up until the last hour. So, yeah, these guys are keeping in mind, hey, I just want to put myself in position. So when that third hour comes, that's when I'm really going to go to work. 7-11, Josh McLevy, a great start in fifth. As you take a look at the battle for sixth, Fred Andrews trying to hold off Barry Hawk. There's some other things happening, too. They're getting to know the track better. And also, the track is getting better traction. The problem is that it's also getting rougher. Loretta Lynn's a yearly stop for the GNCC Series, but a lot of people don't know you guys don't exactly get a chance to go out and ride this course. You make it out, walk it a little bit, but you don't go out and ride it before you actually get on and compete. Well, we used to be allowed to walk it, and we used to be allowed to ride a mountain bike around it, but just recently this year they had a rule change, and you're only allowed to see the course the morning of the race. And, of course, nobody's going to take the energy that it takes to walk around the course you know, that morning. So uh, basically it, it was an effort to, to make the courses a little more fair in that uh, nobody gets a chance to see it until they're racing on it. Do they change a lot year to year? Not typically. You know, sometimes they'll run one direction and the next year they'll run the other direction. Uh, but if, once you've raced at a place for a few years, you kind of get a feel for what's out there. You just don't know at what sequence it's going to be coming up at you. Lafferty's starting to get a little company now. The range has really made up some time. Another thing is also critical is suspension. You know, you kind of get a feel for the bumps that are out there. This place is just brutal on the motorcycle. The shock oil gets really thin, and uh, the thing can start to fade after a while. Well, not only battling the elements here today, but also some injuries as Steve Hatch's four bike is pulled into the pits. Yeah, I was hoping to uh, put the FMF Suzuki up there. I uh, had a pretty good start, and I just kind of wanted to check and see where I was, you know, with the knee and with the uh, thumb. And I did a few laps and just playing it smart. When you get into an injury, you don't really know the gray area when you're healed and when you're not healed. So I'm kind of right in there. Hopefully in, you know, the next couple weeks or month, it'll be healing up and everything will be fine. I'll be back up to 100%. It's not worth riding around in, you know, third to fifth place like I was. I'd like to win. Scott, you know exactly what Steve's talking about, too. 
Well, it's interesting to me that he pulled off because every race counts. And even if everything's not perfect, if I were Steve, I'd be out there trying to gather up points. Something Mike Lafferty's trying to do, gain points on Jason Reigns. The leader comes in first, goes out first. Kudrowski comes in third. Reigns is right in front, can't get away quicker. Kudrowski will now move into second. Reigns falls to third. Rodney Smith and Robbie Jenks take us to fifth. Lafferty, though, needing to stretch it out once again. Nicely through the loop section. Starting to look like a motocross. Yeah, you know, it's difficult for off-road guys. There's uh, pretty serious motocross obstacles, and uh, these guys aren't used to that. The motorcycles aren't set up for it, so uh, when you see a guy like uh, Mike Lafferty doing that well, you got to be happy for him. FMF crew taking a look at the defending champ, Rodney Smith's machine. Obviously, some bigger problems going on there with some suspension, looks like. Yeah, maybe increasing compression. I'm not really sure. It looks like they're making an adjustment on the bottom of the fork. Meanwhile, there is the battle for second. Kudrowski holding on to the number two spot. That's the 12th machine, the FMF Suzuki. Then it's the five machine, Jason Reigns on the Yamaha. Fast portion of this course right here. Yeah, this is a good place for passing, especially for a guy like Mike Kudrowski. He goes his way around the motocross track. You know, once they get in the woods, it's a little more difficult. You almost have to wait for another guy to make a mistake to get around. Out here in the motocross, of course, you don't have to do that. If you're going faster, you just go right around somebody. We talked about it in Big Buck. We're starting to see a little maturity come out of this number five rider. Yeah, I think so. You know, he's, uh, he's young, but he seems like he's learning fast. It's unusual for a guy like him to come out and win with such a dominating, uh, in, in such a dominating way at the first round. Fred Andrews has pulled off the race course. I crashed a little early with a guy and broke my water pump and put it back on and not my day. So he will suffer a DNF and that's going to be costly. You know, these water cooled two strokes, they, they require that you be a little careful. Those water pumps are vulnerable. After he's got his hands full with range. We'll go back to the fight when we return. GNCC Racing at Loretta Lynn's Dude Ranch is being brought to you by MSR Off-Road Riding Apparel. Innovative off-road riding apparel for riders with a single track mind since 1971. Well, more than 90 minutes into this three-hour marathon, you see Jason Raines is taking the lead away from Mike Lafferty. Quickly across the checkpoint, now Lafferty will have to do a little chasing. Not many places to pass though, Scott, so he's probably just going to try to keep him in his sights. Yeah, you know, one of the things that you always do in a course like this is you always take the different line than the guy you're following. And the reason you do that is just in case he happens to come up on a lapper or he happens to make a mistake, you want to be in a place where you can capitalize on that mistake. If you're following right behind him, you can't do anything but just park and wait for him to straighten himself out. McLevy and Hockley, the checkpoint, probably also gets you an opportunity to see if maybe your line is quicker. You'll know right away. Exactly. That's one of the good things about not getting a good start is you have an opportunity to follow every rider as you work your way up through the pack. See where he went and see whether it was faster than the way you had been going. Range on the five on the right side. Lafferty and the seven going by, coming from the left. There's another rider down. I calculated one time years ago that even if I led this race from start to finish, I would make 1,100 passes by the time the three-hour race was over with. And every one of those passes is kind of an opportunity for disaster because you don't want to come in contact with the lap as you're going by. Quickest lap time put in so far by Mike Lafferty, but right now he finds himself in the second spot trying to chase down point leader Jason Reigns. Nobody's doubled up this year, but first and second, both have won a race, so chances are we'll have our first repeat winner of 2002. And you've got a couple of the younger guns out front. You know, Jason's 23, Mike Lafferty is 26, and, uh, you know, the veterans like the 38-year-old Rodney Smith are falling back. It's range on the two-stroke. Going by Lafferty on the four-stroke, it's a deeper, fuller sound. Is there a big difference between the two strokes and the four strokes in GNCC racing? Yeah, there is. It has to do with the power delivery. The four stroke has a little bit of throatier sound, um, has a little more lugging capability, so it's harder to stall. Typically, four strokes are a little bit heavier. Uh, 
which can be an advantage if it's real rocky because then the bike doesn't deflect off the bumps quite so much. It's not quite as influenceable as a lighter two-stroke. Wow, look at that. McLeavy had his hands full with Hawk there, but was able to shut the door. Kind of stepped his way right in there. But Lafferty can benefit from that four-stroke power on the greasy, slippery surfaces like in that grass across the motocross track. Where a two-stroke really has an advantage is where there is traction. The things are light and they have a lot of power. If you can just get that power on the ground, you can really go. Like Hawk was able to get around McLeavy. Lafferty, though, still trying to chase down range through this tight wood section. And it is tight in there. Almost having trouble with a lap rider. Jenks in eighth place now. Yeah, like I said, every time you come up on a lap rider, it, it's critical that you don't you don't tangle. You know, of course, you don't want to hurt anybody or yourself, and you especially don't want to lose any time. Name we haven't called a lot, Randy Hawkins, currently inside the top ten, riding in ninth place. Yeah, Randy's kind of the team manager for the Yamaha off-road effort. Uh, Jason Raines and Barry Hawk both spend quite a bit of time at his place in South Carolina. And I think he's been able to contribute a lot to those guys' speed just because of the experience that he has winning all the National Enduro titles that he has. And that's Josh McLeavy. He's on a privateer Honda. He lives up in Connecticut, so he knows all about trees and rocks. Great ride for him in the top five. I haven't mentioned his name a lot this year either. Lafferty's fallen definitely off the pace. That's the spot that Range just went through a moment ago. Lafferty a good 15, 20 seconds behind at this point. MX Kid's starting to drag him down now. You know, this is Mike Kudrowski's third year at GNCC racing, and if you look at his results, he's getting better and better. Better and better indeed. Only seven seconds behind Lafferty per second, but they both trail Jason Range by a bunch. GNCC Racing from Hurricane Mills, Tennessee is being brought to you today by Suzuki, maker of innovative motorcycles and all-terrain vehicles. Visit your right, Suzuki so dealer and see the complete award-winning lineup today. Dave Reef and Scott Summers back at Loretta Lynch Dude Ranch tracking down Jason Ranger, race leader, trying to track down win number two of 2002. Yeah, Jason's charging really hard. You saw him hit those roots and just about lose control just a second ago. Meanwhile, Rodney Smith trying to hold on to the number four spot. Did get some information from spotters out on the course. Range racing with Lafferty early in the first lap. Both riders went down in the motocross section. Kudrowski got in the mix as well, but it obviously didn't cost him. A quick splash of gas. Range is away. Now here comes Lafferty and Kudrowski. No doubt to stop as well for a quick splash. See the FMF crew ready to fill Kudrowski, who is about ready to come in. Lafferty goes by. Here they come. Lafferty in his pit as well. You know, the mechanics let the drivers know when to pit. They have a calculated guess as to when the bike's going to run out of gas. Of course, they don't want that to happen. So the rider knows a lap beforehand that he's got to pull in. Hawk pulls in in six as you see Rodney Smith goes screaming on by on that. Suzuki, Yamaha down and away. These induction systems are really fast now that they use. It's similar to a NASCAR. It takes about five to seven seconds to fill these bikes up. And what are we putting in them? How much? Oh, it's probably about a gallon and a half to two gallons. Good strategy. Very, very important. Now is really a three-hour race can be decided in the pitch now. Yeah, it certainly can, especially if it's dusty. You can actually plan on going an extra lap if your bike will do it, and that will allow you to pass everybody while they're getting gas. Want to know what it's like to go downhill, pin through the trees? You're riding on board with Mark Hyde, trying to keep up with the competition, but of course competition doesn't have a camera strap to their helmet. Yeah, it's probably no easy task. You know, a helmet weighs about three and a half pounds. And, you know, your boots weigh about nine and a half pounds. All total, everything these guys put on before they get on their motorcycle, you're talking about 27 pounds of gear. And poor Mark's got to have a camera on top of that. On a hot day today, they're probably going to lose probably five, six, seven, eight, nine pounds of sweat. 
Absolutely. You know, the drink systems weigh about five and a half pounds when they start out. And some guys stop and, and get a fresh one. Rodney Smith able to avoid a get off there. Came perilously close. And getting off of Jason Reigns. He's flat got it pinned on this flat section now. And when you hear the crowd cheering like that, you know one thing can't be far behind, and that is the checkered flag. Jason Reigns becomes the first repeat winner of 2002. Nice drive by the Yamaha rider. Quick final check stop. And a high five, good enough for the minute nine second win over Kodrowski, who got by Lafferty in the closing sections. Rodney Smith, another four minutes back. Top three really checking out in the field. Randy Hawkins, Josh, sixth and seventh. Chuck Woodford, Cole Hawkins, and Robbie Jenks all chasing Jason Reigns. I just tried to ride really smooth and, and not make any mistakes, and I'm, I, I, don't, I'm, I honestly don't know. I think I was able to ride the same pace and, and maybe Everybody else maybe kind of slowed down, but I don't know what. I mean, I just tried to ride really smooth the last three laps, and uh, fortunately for me, everything uh, everything worked out. And I just want to thank my dad and all the fans and all my all my family back home for always supporting me, and you know all my sponsors. Everybody's done a wonderful job, and I want to thank everybody for being behind me all these years. He's also pretty lucky that that race ended when it did. Yeah, according to Jason, he started feeling a little bit strange, and I think heat exhaustion was setting in there on the last lap for him. Your water bottle ran out, but. He's able to grab now a 12-point lead over Mike Lafferty as the guy who finished in second today, his second podium of the year, sits in third. That's the MX Kid. Yeah, I gave it my all at the end, and uh, to come out here second, last year I think I ended up fifth, and uh, I feel really good. My FMF Suzuki ran really good, and uh, at the end I thought, man, my tires are kind of sliding a little bit, but I thought maybe they chunked off, but the Dunlap tires hooked up good, and um, got off to a good start and that helped a lot today because it was a little bit dusty rough start. Late in the race, I think Lafferty, you know, he was kind of riding there real fast, aggressive at first, and then it kind of started slowing down a little bit, got real choppy and caught up to him, got around him and kind of pinned it for a while and, and then rode in second place. All told, not a bad day for Mike Lafferty either, Scott. No, he's uh, showing a lot of strength, a lot of endurance by hanging in there and still going fast at the end of the race. Jason got around, he was riding really well. He started riding, you know, he started picking the pace up a little bit and I wasn't comfortable with it and had some problems here and there with lappers, couldn't stay up right with him. And then, uh, you know, kind of gapped us a little bit. Mike caught up to us and pretty much did the same thing. He was riding real strong. And we got into some lappers and I couldn't, you know, I, I couldn't maneuver around him as quick as he could. And he ended up getting around both of us and I, I just wanted to be smart and be strong. I didn't want to end up, you know, trying to ride, you know, faster than what I should have been able to. So I just hung in there and, and took the third and I'm definitely happy with that. So now Scott with five rounds in the book starting to look like a two bike race. Yeah, it sure does. These guys are all going really well and there's, there's plenty of races left, so it'll be interesting to see how it plays out. Where will we play it out next? The Spartan GNCC in Sparta, Kentucky. So for Scott Summers, I'm Dave Reef. We'll see you next time on the Outdoor Life Network GNCC Racing. Come join us. It's a blast. William Yokely comes into right.